All right, Seth, you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, awesome. All right, so uh, where am I? Uh, where are you speaking to me from? Oh, I'm at home, so in oh. California right now. Okay, cool. Well, uh, you'll be in Dallas in less than a month, and I'm excited about yeah. that. Yeah, and yeah, that's the beginning of the tour. Yeah, I think three, three or four dates. Our second date, I believe. Yeah, second date. It starts uh, April 6th in New Mexico, and we got you at the Gas Monkey Live the following night. And I've seen Testament many times in concert, and you guys always bring a solid lineup. And this one, with Sepulchre and Prong, is especially strong. So I was wondering how much of a hand that you personally have in picking your uh, support acts. Uh, we're hand-in-hand hand with it, you know, with the agent. You know, spe- especially now that we know Sepulchre had a new record out, and they're on the same label with us, so... We've been friends for a long time, but never toured together. So it made perfect sense. The timing was right, you know, with their release of their record. And in Prong, we've done a few sh- one-off shows with them, and we've always said with each other, "Man, we got to tour together." So <laughs> opportunity arose and said, "Let's go, let's do it." So it definitely made for a great package. It was long overdue, and we're all really fired up for the fans. And I think it's gonna be pretty fun for all of us as well. Oh, I agree. I'm, I'm excited about this. Um, and like I mentioned before, I've seen you guys many times, like since 92, I think the ritual was when I first saw you. And I, I may have missed two dates since then, but I've seen you a lot of times. Um, your voice has seemingly gotten stronger in that time since then and over the entire 30 years the Testament's been around. And a lot of your peers have experienced the opposite effect to keeping your voice so strong and how do you maintain it on a tour where you're playing five nights in a row? Well, I think... Um, probably when I was younger, partying harder on the road, you know, drinking, smoking, standing up late, doing all that. I think maybe I was, and we toured a lot, so I was probably really just kind of thrashing my voice. And I really hadn't, you know, thought about the vocal training part of it that I had put into it when I started. I think over the years, probably mellowing out a little bit on the, definitely on the drinking and, and being more focused when it comes to touring to kind of take care of myself, prepare myself, train myself for a month or two. Where I think now, you know, as I sing, getting older, my voice, I've really found what I can do what I can't do. I don't try to sing outside of, you know, hi, I'm not a screamer really anymore. You know, I just kind of focused in on what I do best and I stuck with it. And I think it has helped me with my range a little bit since I've been more relaxed and comfortable with my own voice. And I think it does reflect and come across on the records, and especially live performance. I feel I'm a lot stronger now live than I was because I am more focused on the performance part of it, you know, definitely taking care of myself. And I'm not a spring chicken anymore, so I have to, you know, take care of myself a little bit more just to make sure, you know, I can hang there for, especially this tour, 36 shows. We haven't done that probably since Souls of Black tour. <laughs> um. <laughs> Well, you mentioned the album before about having a strong voice in the album, and I love the album, by the way. And I was, I, well, and I tell it to all the guys I interview. I mean, when I'm a fan, I buy the CD, I buy the physical copy, so I've had it since day one. Um, <laughs> well, Centuries of Suffering, man, I, I got to tell you, that's probably the, the song where your voice is at its most brutal. And uh, this album also kind of, you struck a balance between classic Testament riffs and kind of played them through the, the heaviness of demonic, in my ears, anyway. And Well, definitely the tempos are, because, you know, I know from the demonic record, Gene coming in playing that first time ever with us, it was a crazy record, but I think the band was in a different place, but here, where we were to the last record, Gene went right back and just this monster drumming and solid, it definitely picked up the pace from the last couple of records. So, yeah, it's definitely, definitely a combination I would say between like a demonic practice that we preach, especially for me vocally, and some of the riffs. You know, they're they're just more hooky, catchy riffs instead of having to be, you know, blazing fast. Yeah, and my favorite song, which we'll talk about now, is Stronghold because it's yeah. just a fist pumper and it's like a mosher. So, yeah. do you ever feel like you're sacrificing what you're trying to say to the heaviness of the song, like like the meaning getting lost a little bit in people's ears, maybe? Well, I mean, a song is interpreted any way you interpret it. You know, I could write it for one meaning, and it can totally mean something else to somebody else. So, um, but the gist, but but what the way you just described it, hands up, fist pumping, unity kind of thing. It's exactly the feeling that was supposed to be strong, the meaning of stronghold. 
You know, mm-hmm. we were in with live and dedicated to um, the Standing Rock natives, um, you know, just showing support. And uh, it's been it's been killer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I love that song the first time I heard it, like, like all of them, but that's just the one. For lack of a better word, why no ballads this time around? It just wasn't in the cards, you know, and I don't think uh, we got to write a thrash record. It's got to, the tempo's got to be picked up to improve what we did from the last record. So that was the the main goal. So I don't, there was never, there was never that extra song that Eric just had that, I mean, if he had brought one to me, I would have went for it, but it just (laughs) never, (laughs) it just never happened. So, but that's okay. You know, I was, I was happy just with what we had. I mean, I wouldn't say a ballad, but a song born in a rut is the closest thing that's moody and got a slow pace and a slow mood to it. Yeah. It's far from a ballad, but you know, that's as close as we got to it on this record. Yeah, quite far. I would agree. Um, I read before the album came out that, uh, the Herd of the Snake was written with the gathering in mind. So what is it about that album that you wanted to revisit as opposed to the rest of the catalog? Well, I think at that record was really, I think, you know, the culmination at that point where we were with band and everything we were doing up to that point, we really found a good combination of the thrash with what Eric liked elements of black metal and blast beats and stuff like that. So he brought a lot of that kind of to the riffing and the drumming and the, and the blast beats in there was the first time we were kind of put that in the Testament mix, but it felt really good and really comfortable and really natural. So I think that was kind of, I think we kind of found our identity and and started really from that record to where we are today. We've really fine tuned from that point. So we always kind of refer back to that record. Um, I don't know something about it. It was just, it was unique. Yeah. I love that album too. So (laughs) it's not a bad album to refer to. Um, Yeah. (laughs) I read an interview with you recently that you were quoted as saying that brotherhood of the snake was not really that much fun to make because, uh, it felt like there was a lack of involvement from the rest of the band. And to me, you and Eric have always seemed like the creative nucleus behind Testament anyway. So how was well, this? Different than well, we, were, we, we wrote the whole record. Gene came up a couple times and jammed with us and, you know, worked on the record. But for the most part, me and Eric wrote it. And, you know, Drum Machine or Alex Bent, who was, you know, playing in Battlecross for a short period, helped us out. He lives in the Sacramento area. So him and Eric, I think he was doing the Dragon Lord record with Eric. So... He came in and, and um, a two-year process had gone by where we were working with Gene and Alex and just me and Eric. And we knew that after the Slayer tour, you know, in February and March that, you know, we had a few months to take off and we had to go to Europe in June, that we had to have that songs written and ready to go record before we head to June and for tour. It just kind of built frustration for me. I was just kind of frustrated with Eric and just kind of button heads and and uh, pointing fingers at each other who's to blame not having the socks finished <laughs> and it just kind of built up some tension and anger and, and it, it was just it was a really weird deal but we knew we had to get a record done so we went into the studio without having the demos with the songs finished and Alex, Gene and Steve or even completed songs they just had a bunch of ideas right. so I think it was probably frustrating for them too and I know for Gene he was the first one up with Eric and he he was talking to the engineer he was frustrated and, and, and counted the shit out of the drums which was a great thing because he did a monster job on it and you can hear his anger and aggression in the drumming and um, so it, it wasn't the, the best fun process and by the time like um, Seven Seals where Eric didn't even show me the song you know um, until I actually got the student, and the engineer said, "Hey, how's it? How's that new song coming on?" Like, what new song? <laughs> I go, "Nobody's ever shown me a new song." So, you know, it just all this other little stuff just kept adding up, and it was just made this really just tension between me and Eric. And um, but I think in the end, maybe it lit a little fire under our ass, and maybe that's what we needed to go through because you know we always try to top your last records, and we always say, "Man, that's gonna be a tough one to top." Yeah. <laughs> Maybe this is what had to happen for us to get to this point of this record to, to come up about what it was. And at the end of the day, when it was all done, we were very happy and the fighting and the bickering was all out the window. But yeah. I did make it clear to Eric right when it was done that, dude, 
I did not enjoy myself and I don't ever want to go through this again to do this. So we've already talked about, you know, when we're downtime, we're going to just get together and start writing now. Cool. I'm really looking forward to hearing that then. <laughs> yeah. Well, regardless of all that, the album is as tight and complex as any of your greatest albums. I mean, for real. And uh, for me, you guys have the best rhythm section in metal with Gene and oh, yeah. on bass. Oh, yeah. No yeah. <laughs> so I love them. Um, um, I also read another interview with you saying that uh, Testament can't do anything different at this point. Question to Tom Hunting from Exodus when I interviewed him a couple of years ago. And that's, do you ever feel confined by your genre and or, if you want to call it, what is expected of Testament? Well, yeah, I mean, you have to bet at this point after 30 years, if I think we've built up to where we're at. There's no chance to try to take chances and write, be, try to do something other than Testament or what we are or what people know us to be. If you're opening up the door for criticism and people to look at something to yeah. grab onto. So, it, you know, it, you can't at this point. And I think, shoot, man, I think we've pretty much, after 30 years of doing what we do, I think we got a good grip on what we do and kind of, fi you know, fine-tuned this. Yeah. So no one's questioning that, I promise you there. <laughs> but um, is there anything specific you'd like to see Testament experiment with uh, at all? Yeah, I'm not sure. I mean, I don't know about maybe some uh, – I'm not sure. I think right now we're we're in a comfortable spot, but who knows what's new and out there that – something new might come along that everybody's trying who knows you know yeah that's what's the beautiful thing about music I mean, it's uh, it's evolved from when we started to where we're at today and it's it's just gonna keep it's i'm sure it's gonna keep on evolving you know because like when there's some songs that aren't metal enough for me i kind of i kind of bitch i'm always the one that's eric write it heavy it's gotta be heavy gotta be heavy so when it's when it's not the right feeling for me and the vocals don't feel right and feel too happy that's when i kind of say nah, i don't know i don't want to that doesn't sound i don't hear it <laughs> your catalog has absolutely no bad albums and uh obviously because of that it's one of the reasons you're one of the most highly respected bands in metal today but i want to talk uh, about uh, the 90s when uh, metal was favorable and how that might have affected testament's output i mean did, did that time affect your output the songs you were writing well, it did once Alex left and Louie left at that point in our career because bad times. We, I, we kind of wrote it out, though, but I think the music we wrote was kind of angry, you know, demonic and mm -hmm. the low record. You know, the first song I sang, Dog Face God's a Death Voice, through a whole song, and I never attempted that. So it was kind of just a turning point at that point. Do you think Testament would be as respected if the 90s or the initial breakup itself hadn't happened? I mean, who knows what we would have done because I know we were kind of growing so far apart when we split up that I don't think it would have been healthy and I don't think the songwriting would have been healthy. That's for sure. We wouldn't be, we wouldn't have accomplished what we did, I think, if we would have stayed together. Gotcha. Okay. And how did those years strengthen the bond between you and Eric Peterson? Um, well, I mean, we're like brothers. I mean, you know, when I was younger, I was probably the bigger bully brother and he was the younger brother. You know, we still argue like brothers and fight and have disagreements, but it did make us closer, you know, and I think, you know, when we know we'll all be a part of each other's life until the end of time right now. <laughs> That's good news. Um, I want to ask you a few catalog specific questions because you know, these, are, these are fan questions, of course, I want to know. So if it were up to you and only you, what song or songs would you add to the live set immediately? Off the new record, which I really want to play, um, is Seven Seals. Uh, songs like Eyes of Wrath. I like getting in there. Oh, yeah. I love them. Um, yeah, probably songs like that, you know. Cool. What is your most underrated album? For a Testament record? Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I, I probably have to say like low or demonic, maybe. You know, yeah, that's a good transition to my next question because uh, I asked my friends what they wanted to know from you. The the, the unanimous question was this one. Are you ready? Yeah. And, and I apologize for the phrasing. I don't mean it rudely. <laughs> Why the fuck don't you play any songs off of low anymore? <laughs> you know, I don't know. Every time we we all you know we. We always say that, and everybody always says, we need to play something off a of low, and then we never do. <laughs> um, 
Well, it's all face gods have played last last uh, in tour in uh, Europe, but not in the U.S. So I don't know. I mean, low is always a song that we want to just play. We always go into it, but yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Maybe it'll be in this set. We haven't got started rehearsal. We're, we're actually all of us are picking songs, rarities that we haven't played before that everybody would like to play, and we're kind of compile a list and see what happens. I got one more question for you, and I ask this of all the guys I interview, and it's just a little fun thing I like to do. So I'm going to put you on the spot here. I know you've toured with both of these bands, Priest or Maiden? Uh, Maiden. See, okay, I say Maiden too, but you're the first one to agree with me. It's Maiden. Sure. Someone else said Priest. <laughs> well, I've, I've did Priest. I haven't toured with Maiden, so that would be well. Oh, you toured with Maiden. That's why you opened for them. Oh, that's then, right. Fear of the Dark. That's right. Exactly. That's when you're on the ritual. I saw that tour. That's right. Okay. Well, so I can even remember. <laughs> I was partying on that tour then. <laughs> we, we were partying too, just not, you know, we were on the other side of the stage. So it was, that was a good time. It was a good show. All right. Well, <laughs> All right. Well. Thank you so much for taking the time to talk with me. Um, the tour kicks off April 6th in New Mexico. You're here. You live April 7th. Brotherhood of the Snake, congrats on that record, man. It's really, really good. I love it. And I uh, appreciate it. Oh, anytime, man. And for me personally, thank you so much for doing what you do. It means a lot to a lot of people. And keep doing it. Oh, kick ass, man. No problem. <laughs> we'll see you with the gas monkey. I'll be there. Take care. All right, man. See you.